keep you waiting. Raise the curtains. It's time to savor the marriage of pleasure and pain. Now enjoy the show until we meet again. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another quick Switch review. And today we're taking a look at a game I have been having an immense amount of fun with, and that is Catherine Full Body for the Nintendo Switch. Um, this game has been available for, I think, like two or three years for the PS4, um, but was recently released back in July on the Nintendo Switch in Japan and in North America. So you can get this game pretty much anywhere, uh, which is good news because this is a great game. And if you're a fan of the original Catherine, or if you're a fan of puzzle games in general, and Atlas games especially, uh, you're definitely going to want to play this game. Um, I had played the original Catherine something like 10 years ago when it came out on the PS3 and 360. Really enjoyed it and did not get around to playing full body on the PS4 because I do not have a PS4. So when it came out for the Nintendo Switch, I was really excited for that because I remembered really liking the original Catherine and hearing some of my friends who had played full body about how uh, excellent it was, how um, great of an update it was. Uh, so I was totally looking forward to playing it. Right off the bat, uh, I will say there are going to be some spoilers here for the story if you've never played Catherine or uh, don't know anything about the story in Catherine. It's fantastic. It's a great like love triangle, kind of psychological horror kind of story that follows the character of Vincent as he's struggling with issues of sort of like uh, infidelity and commitment and all that kind of uh, stuff. And uh, pretty interesting how I interpret this game um, now versus when I first played it when I was in my 20s, now in my 30s, and dealing with these uh, kind of same issues. I'm like well past that like partying phase of my life, uh, for the most part anyway. Um, so uh, the way I relate to the character of Vincent is different now than it was uh, when I was in my 20s, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the story remains the same as it was in the original Catherine, but there is the introduction of a new character, Rin, who, uh, I like Rin, I, I think Rin is a great character. Um, I didn't know before I started playing the game, but uh, it became apparent pretty quickly uh, that Rin is actually transgender, and it's, it's very apparent when uh, Vincent finally sees her naked. Um, but I like the character of Rin a lot because Vincent, you know, he has a lot of influences in his life from his friends and other various people around him. And definitely from the two Catherines kind of, you know, pushing and pulling him uh, in either direction. And Rin is kind of just this really, like, positive influence on Vincent. Kind of just like this uh, supportive, sweet, you know, friend kind of character. Even though uh, Vincent does, you know, start to become uh, kind of sweet on Rin just because of uh, how uh, genuinely um, innocent and kind uh, Rin is. So I like that there's a lot of... Um, uh, the story is extended in this game. You get the same basic story, but scenes go on for longer than they would. You get all kinds of um, new uh, additions to the story, uh, incorporating Rin into various scenes of the game, um, sort of changing the trajectory of the story uh, for Vincent. So I like that a lot. Um, the story in this game is great. And you can experience all of it in the story mode in this game, which is just one of a handful of uh, different gameplay modes here. The story mode, uh, you have a few different difficulty options to choose from for when you're playing the puzzle sections. And you have an easy, a normal, and hard, and I don't know if there's a, a, an even harder difficulty, but um, I will say the easy mode is very, very easy, almost too easy, I would say. So maybe like if you've never played Catherine before, um, when you're playing on the higher difficulties, the puzzles, obviously, you know, the way you play through the puzzle portions of the game is you have to climb this tower of blocks and you have to push and pull them in a way to basically create steps for yourself. And that starts out simple enough, but then as the game drags on, it becomes much, much more difficult. So if you've never played Catherine before and you kind of want to experience the story and not get too frustrated with the gameplay for your first playthrough, um, the easy mode would be pretty good for that. Um, but it is extremely easy. So if you've already played the original Catherine and you got pretty uh, adept uh, at playing that uh, version, um, you're probably not going to want to play the easy mode in this game. 
you're gonna want to step it up to like normal or the uh, the hard mode maybe. Um, I stick. Uh, I, I tried the easy mode for a little bit because um, I had not played Catherine in a very long time. Found it to be uh, really too easy for me, so kicked it up to the normal mode. The normal mode starts out easy enough, and gets you know more and more difficult as it progresses. It, it does eventually get pretty damn frustrating uh, at a certain point. And then the hard mode I haven't even tackled yet because I know I'm just I'm the type of person I'm gonna pull my hair out with that thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely the puzzle portions of the game, very fun, that's the real meat of the game, that's the real gameplay. Uh, you start out with just, you know, regular blocks, pushing and pulling them around, but then you get blocks that'll break out from under you if you step on them too many times. Eventually they're like ice blocks where if you step on them you'll slide to one end of the stage or the other. Uh, blocks that have spikes, so if you don't get off of them quick enough they'll kill you. Lots of cool stuff like that, plus a lot of items to help you out. Um, items you can use to uh, throw extra blocks onto the screen or to jump up super high to reach a higher ledge without having to work all the blocks to get up there. Things like that. That's all very cool. And when you're not in those uh, puzzle sections, the nightmare sections, um, when you're in the bar, that stuff's pretty cool because you can just sort of sit there and talk with the other characters and uh, drink your various types of alcohol and then get all kinds of cool uh, information about different types of alcohol. I always thought that was like an interesting uh, aspect of the gameplay here. And also while you're in the bar you can play Rapunzel which is a very fun arcade game that's there in the bar that plays similarly to the nightmare sequences and Rapunzel I, I had probably as much fun with as I did with the normal game. Like, that was really, really fun. Um, so you can play some Rapunzel. And also in this game, uh, something that, you know, didn't really have uh, much of a point to it, but you can put on these uh, sheep glasses when you're in the bathroom of the bar. And then when you come out, you can see everyone in their underwear, which um, I don't... I don't know what the point of it is, other than just looking at the characters in their underwear for fun. Uh, but there it is. If you want to see all the characters in the bar in their underwear, uh, you can do that with the uh, the, the lost sheep uh, glasses. Um, but anyway, yeah, the story is uh, fantastic. Again, this great like uh, love triangle, psychological horror, kind of really grim uh, subject matter. Um, so the story is excellent, and it plays out really well throughout the game. It's a lot of fun. I like the new character, Rin. I like all the extended uh, story sequences and stuff. That's all great. In addition to the story mode, there are a number of other gameplay modes. First, there is the Tower of Babel, which is a challenge mode. I've been having a lot of fun with that, but that is another um, uh, source of frustration in this game for me. Um, because again, like the story mode, it starts out simple enough. You can clear maybe like the first couple of challenges in Tower of Babel um, without too much uh, issue if you've been, you know, playing through the story mode and everything. Um, but it gets much, much more difficult as time goes on. You have to get really, really creative with how you're shifting blocks around if you want to make it through these these challenges, or if you even want to make it like part way through the challenges, because they're very difficult and they count how many steps um, you make to the uh, the uh, the end of the challenge. Um, so yeah, they're fun, very fun, uh, addictive. I would even say because I'm a puzzle game fan and I do get uh, quite into them. Um, when I uh, start playing them, but uh, challenging as all hell and uh, pretty damn frustrating. But if you like a good, tough puzzle game, uh, the Tower of Babel in this game has got you covered. There's some uh, some serious challenge in there. Um, I don't think I'll ever clear all the challenges. I, I don't think I just I don't think I have the patience for it to be completely honest. Um, but they're great. They're a lot of fun. Also, there is. Uh, a uh, like a versus mode and there is online competitive play in this game as well um, so that's very cool I actually have not tried that out yet but I imagine that competitive Catherine gameplay has got to be insanely fun um, you can actually go watch some other uh, videos on that on YouTube um, to sort of like illustrate that but uh, yeah that looks pretty cool I actually should try that out pretty soon um, but I have finished the story mode in this game both on uh, easy and normal and I've played through quite a bit of the Tower of Babel and been having a lot of fun with all of that. Um, so uh, this game, gameplay-wise, story-wise, all that, it's it's excellent. And the just the visuals, the the visual design of the game is fantastic. It's an Atlas game, so you know it's going to have a lot of you know thick atmosphere, great character designs, and everything. If you like the Persona games, you're going to like um, the the visual style of the uh, uh, Catherine games because again like the character designs the the general mood and atmosphere it's all you know pretty similar to what you might find in like personas three four and five so it's a, a very good looking game great characters 
Um, great settings. The nightmare sequences are especially nightmarish. There's some pretty freaky stuff in there. So as a horror game, it's pretty effective as well. Uh, a lot of comedic stuff in it too. I mean, just all around uh, fantastic in terms of uh, the visuals, the story. The soundtrack is really good too. Um, some more like upbeat music, some of it a lot more subdued though. I like to use uh, a lot of the Catherine music actually in some of my videos in the past. Um, so I really do enjoy the music in Catherine. And the visual design is great, drenched with uh, style and substance. And uh, the story is fantastic, the gameplay is super fun and uh, will give you a, a, a lot of challenge and it'll probably keep you playing for a pretty long time. Uh, so Catherine, full body, I can recommend picking this up. It is still a uh, you know, brand new game, just released in July. So I think uh, if you go to like Amazon or something, it's like $50, $60 game. Um, which, I mean, you can get it cheaper on the PS4. I'm pretty sure the PS4 has all the same options on it that the, um, you know, the Switch version does. Um, advantage of the Switch version, though, is you can play it on the go. So if you want to, you know, I like for me, for instance, when I'm on the train, like a commute to work, I take my Switch with me a lot and I play like, uh, you know, I'll play some Dragon Quest, you know, just do some grinding on the train or I'll play some uh, Mario Kart. Uh, also started playing some Catherine on the train, too, just sitting there for my like hour long commute, playing through some of the uh, Tower of Babel stuff. Um, or at least attempting to, uh, so that's pretty cool. So Catherine, full body, um, I definitely recommend this game, especially like if you haven't played it on the PS4 yet and you have a Switch, uh, this is a definite recommendation to pick up if you enjoy puzzle games. Um, and also if you've played the original Catherine and really enjoyed it and haven't gone back to this, uh, this game in a long time, uh, full body, uh, fantastic. Pick it up for your Switch or your PS4, whichever the case may be. You're going to have a good time with it. I guarantee it. Uh, yeah, Catherine, full body, on the Switch. Fantastic game. Enjoying it a lot. Uh, anyway, everybody, thanks for sitting through this review of Catherine, full body. Let me know down in the comments. Have you played Catherine Full Body? Have you played the original Catherine? And what do you think of it? Do you think it's, it's worth a pickup? Uh, especially if you've played the Switch version. Uh, how'd you feel about it? And would you like to see more Catherine content? Because I'd love to see, maybe not particularly like a sequel to Catherine, because I don't feel like the game needs a sequel, but more stuff like this from Atlas. I don't need just Persona games. Like stuff like this, little deviations from that that tell these, you know, little self-contained stories with their own gameplay style and stuff. I would love to see more stuff like that from Atlas. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. It's about the review for this game, which is fantastic. So, yeah, it gets my uh, full recommendation. So again, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for liking, subscribing, con commenting, etc., etc. You know, the stuff people say at the end of a YouTube video. And come back next time for more Switch reviews and probably... Uh, Later this year when I pick up a PS5, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into some of those games as they're released. Uh, doing some current gen stuff on this channel for a change. Uh, so how do you like that? Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.